刻むでハモンのビート After part six, Araki decided to give himself a bit of a personal renaissance by ending the story and beginning a new continuity with part seven. In my opinion, this is one of the best ideas he has ever had, since Steel Ball Run turned out to be one of his biggest accomplishments, along with the biggest evolution of his own art style to date. However, just because part seven is a new story does not mean that it's lacking in references to its predecessor. Many concepts return from before, along with characters and events that are referenced in a new context. Many people view the characters in this universe as one to one counterparts, but this is wrong. I've inadvertently done this myself, with a poorly worded title on what turned out to be one of my most viewed videos. Characters in Steel Ball Run are not literal rebirths of old characters, since this is a new universe that is separate from the end of Part 6. They are simply homages to previous characters, and one new character has often referenced more than one that came before it. With that out of the way, I'll be going over every callback to the first six parts of JoJo in Part 7. Steven Steele's hair or hat, or whatever it's supposed to be, is similar to FF's hair from Part 6. It also resembles the little hat thing on Abakio's head. Lucy Steele's maiden name is Pendleton, similar to Arena Pendleton from Part 1. One of the sponsors of the race is the Speedwagon Oil Company, which is a reference to the character Speedwagon and the Speedwagon Foundation present in the original universe. The character Mountain Tim has a similar appearance to the early Speedwagon, and by extension, Mike Harper from Meraki's first manga, Poker Under Arms. He also gains a scar similar to Speedwagon's after the Oyokomova fight. Diego Brando is similar in name, appearance, and personality to Dio Brando from Part 1. He also uses many of Dio's trademark phrases and mannerisms. The racer Ermd Avdol is based on the character Mohammed Avdol from Part 3. The character Gyro Zapelli is referencing the Zapelli family that appeared in Parts 1 and 2. Gyro himself fits a similar role to Will Zapelli training Jonathan. He is also similar to Caesar Zapelli, based on his friendly rivalry with the protagonist, and his true name being Julius Caesar Zapelli. Just like how the Zapelli family was known for its use of Haman, this new Zapelli family is known for using spin. Johnny Joestar shares a name with Jonathan Joestar from Part 1. He also fits a similar role as the student to this part's Zapelli. The Haman from the early parts of JoJo is similar to the spin introduced in Part 7. Both are abilities that are used by people which are separate from stands, but can often complement them. The character Poco Loco shares a similar name to Poco from Part 1. He talks about meeting with a fortune teller who looks similar to the fortune teller Enya from Part 3. During the first stage of the race, the commentator refers to the Santa Ana winds, which were used in Part 2 as the namesake for the Pillar Man Santana. An unseen racer named Caravan Sarai is seen on the results page of the race. His name is identical to that of the original user of the stand Anubis from Part 3. The fight with Mrs. Robinson is similar to the fight with Donovan from Part 2 in many ways. Both take place early in the part and are the second conflict the main character faces. Both characters use abilities that are separate from the main abilities of the story. Donovan did not have Haman and was not a vampire, but instead he used extreme stealth and knife techniques. Mrs. Robinson does not use spin or stands and instead controls bugs. Both fights largely feature cactuses and both involve being chained to cactuses Donovan after the fight and Mrs. Robinson in his backstory. Stand abilities return from the previous parts. They largely function the same, but the means of attaining one is different. Instead of a virus that is introduced to Earth by a meteorite, they are gained from the power of the Holy Corpse. Places called Devil's Palms form around the pieces of the corpse, and passing through one gives you a stand. The first Devil's Palm the characters encounter is described as having a legend of a shooting star crashing there, a reference to the stand meteorite. The stand Tomb of the Boom has abilities like manipulating iron and magnetism. This is similar to the stands Bastet and Metallica. The stand Oyokomova uses explosions somewhat similar to those of Killer Queen. However, instead of a trigger, the bombs are controlled by pins that must be held in. 
The character Fritz von Stroheim is a reference to Rudolf von Stroheim from Part 2. Both are also cyborgs. The stand Wired uses fishing hooks in a similar way to the stand Beach Boy from Part 5. Funny Valentine is shown shotgunning a beer, similar to Jotaro from the beginning of Part 3. Two more unseen racers are named Shigechi after the character from Part 4, and Tarkus after the character from Part 1. The character Norsuke Higashikata gets his name from the Higashikata family from Part 4. The stand, in a silent way, uses onomatopoeia to attack, similar to Echo's Act 2 from Part 4. Johnny Stan Tusk evolves through different acts, also similar to Echo's. Johnny Joestar's father is George Joestar, the same name as Jonathan's. However, his mother still has a different name. Johnny's pet mouse Danny mirrors Jonathan's pet dog with the same name. Both are also tied in to tragic events from their childhood. The fate of the character Magent Magent is very similar to that of the main villain Cars from Part 2. Both become trapped in a similar pose until they eventually stop thinking. When Diego attempts to suffocate Hot Pants, the SFX that is shown is the same as when Dio kissed Arena in Part 1. The stand The World returns as the ability of the alternate universe Diego. It functions identically, the only difference being the hearts on the design replaced with a capital letter D. The stand also attacks in the same way that Dio did in Part 3, by throwing knives during stop time. And that was every JoJo callback in Part 7. Part 8 has a large amount of these as well, but I may wait to cover it until after Part 8 is completed. If you want to be updated on new videos, or leave suggestions, join the Hum and Beat Discord using the link in the description. To support the channel, become a patron to receive exclusive rewards. All of my patrons are featured at the end of every video, with the higher tiers getting a verbal shoutout. Everyone gets the patron role on my Discord server, and they can also download the full versions of my old music reference videos, which cannot be shown on YouTube. And finally, don't forget to subscribe for future videos. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and $10 patrons, so thank you to Norden the Lich. Alex Ramirez, Raziana, and Anna Suihat, Laura, The Insane Penguin, Nax, 